Sean Fusco, Raw Fitness, here to wrap up our series on ACL rehabilitation uh, or ACL injury prevention uh, protocol. Um, now, we talked about um, you know assessing the athlete. We talked about uh, how we use movement prep or we use corrective exercises and, and proper stretching techniques, dynamic stretching techniques to, to help to cure the dysfunction. And we talked about how we were going to build on top of uh, that with our strength training and our plyometrics. And now to kind of put it all together is, is we need to reinforce proper movement patterns out on the field because if I make the athlete as strong as possible but the patterns that's stored in their brain are dysfunctional or they don't know how to side shuffle correctly, um, then you know all is pretty much for nothing. Now granted, because the right muscles are engaged uh, and strengthened and the wrong muscles have been lengthened and inhibited, the odds are less likely that the athlete is going to have a bad movement pattern. However, that being said, you, it definitely does not hurt to uh, do simple things savagely well. So as far as lateral uh, shufflings go, we use a, a, a drill called lateral push to base to shuffle. So we're starting the athlete off in their base position and we have them pushing off laterally, going right back into the base position and then we have them start to accelerate in more of a shuffle. Uh, the beginning of any good movement drill is a good solid base position. So uh, what we want to do is we want to drop the hips back, looking for about a 90 degree angle at the hips, knees, and ankles. The head should be in line with the hips. Uh, the eyes can be up, but we don't want the head picked all the way up. Uh, that's disengaging the fascial line that's there, uh, an entirely different topic altogether. Uh, but that's what we want. And one of the reasons it's so critical to have a good solid base position is if the athlete is too upright and they try and push off laterally, now notice I'm, I'm going right into that valgus position where the knee is caving in too much uh, and, and I'm, I'm causing obviously too much stress on the connective tissue. So, but from a good base position though, for me to push off laterally, now I just have a good nice clean angle across. Uh, and what I tell the athletes to even focus on is, is if they are going to shuffle to the right is to actually internally rotate the hips slightly. And the reason for that, if they internally rotate that hip slightly, now not only am I able to push off from my hips and through my knees, but I'm able to use my ankle uh, because I can plantar flex into the ground to create more force. So that being said, we get the athlete in a good base position right here. Nice and low, creating a good angle, in hips slightly internally rotated, back stays flat. They're going to push down and back into the ground, pushing the ground away from them, and they're going to extend out into a base position. I want the athlete's center of mass to stay on top of the lead leg, not the trail leg. So I'm going to push, I'm going to step, and I'm going to keep my base of support on top of my lead leg. So it's going to look like this. Okay? So now that's lateral push to base. Now we can take push to base, push to base, push to base, and we can add a shuffle in where the athlete's moving. The key here is not to let the athlete's feet get too close together because in a real athletic situation, say you're a basketball player, someone goes crossover and changes back direction on you and your feet are too close together, then well, you're not going to be able to react to that. So push to base, to shuffle, back and forth, keeping the feet spread apart, keeping a good base position, not punching over. That's what I got for you today. Thanks, guys.